Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to Civilization 6. You know, I've been thinking a lot about districts in Civilization 6 and how to optimize them and 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 it's been something that it's, it's kind of hard for me to wrap my brain around it while I'm maybe in the game in the moment so I thought I would try my hand at creating myself like a little tool and really that I could use to really think about uh, districts and do something a, a bit crazy so uh, I, let me just show you this and then we'll uh, take a look at something that I think is pretty darn awesome. So uh, I'll see you there. So here we are in my Civilization VI city planning image that I've created in uh, Adobe InDesign. Um, so I found some hex grids and uh, I put them in here. And so on the left here, I've created a um, city planning grid that's just the right size for planning out a single city. And I've, I've, I've been creating the... Um, uh, the terrain features down here. So I've got these little blue things which are for rivers um, and I've got this one's actually smaller so that it can go on this side and then I've got these little features like hills and mountains and, and mines that I just made and, and lakes so that I can stick them on here and uh, map out the uh, terrain of the city that I founded. However over here on the right I've got a much larger grid that uh, I'm using to develop my idea for the mega city. It's basically a central city surrounded by six spoke cities that are, that are all four blocks apart from each other, so as close together as you can get them. Because back in Civilization V, towards the end of Civ V, before Civ VI came out, I was really interested in the uh, city sprawl gameplay style. It, it sounded really interesting and fun. So I want to try it in here in Civ VI, which I think I think it's viable. So. Um, <clears throat> I've created this idea of the mega city where we have the central city we surround it with the six spoke cities and then we try and maximize district adjacencies not just the adjacency bonus for having them next to each other but maximize the coverage uh, that you get from um, districts that can spread to other cities so um, what I mean by this is uh, if we look at this the reason that I, this first came to my mind was the Colosseum. So I, ba I made a tile just for the Colosseum because the Colosseum provides its amenity bonus to all cities within six tiles. So I got to thinking, what was the maximum, what's the maximum number of cities that you could possibly affect with the bonus of the Colosseum? And I think this is it. I think seven cities is the maximum number of cities that it's possible for the Colosseum to benefit. Because if we look at this, Obviously, the Colosseum is benefiting the city you build it in, but by placing it directly next to the city center of the middle one, it's never further away than six tiles from even the furthest outer hub city. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, and then six lands on the city center. So by placing the Colosseum right next to the city center in any of these uh, eight tile, eight hexes, I mean six hexes, excuse me, the Colosseum's uh, bonus will will apply to all seven of these cities. I don't think you can get more than that. Uh, I'd, I'd love for someone to try, but I do think this is the most efficient setup for the Coliseum. That brings us to the Entertainment District itself, which has two buildings, the zoo and the stadium, that also provide their bonuses to cities within six tiles. So again, because this is one block away from the central city, it is able to provide its bonus to all seven cities itself and then all six of these outer cities. Now I did make a slight mistake with these entertainment districts right here, but this is something that you kind of have to decide for yourself. The entertainment districts for the outer cities, you can either have them benefiting three cities, the central one, the one that it's built at, and one additional one, or four cities. And, and the way that you do that is if you place them right here, then they will benefit the three cities that are around them. Okay, the central one, that one, and that one for this one here. However, if I switch places this one with this theater district, which was just there for no particular reason because I need a place to put a theater district, by putting it here, uh, now it can also benefit the one down here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So by placing them there, you can benefit uh, four cities instead of three. 
However, because the entertainment district doesn't have adjacency, uh, adjacencies, it's not going to benefit anything from it's not going to benefit from the districts that you've placed it next to. And you may wish to place something else there, like this theater district was getting boosted by uh, four districts. Now it's only uh, being boosted by uh, three districts. So depending, that might uh, be better for you. But if you wanted to maximize amenities, you could you could do that. I've I've identified a sweet spot, uh, and the sweet spot. Let me just leave that there. <clears throat> and uh, the, the sweet spot is these three tiles here, okay? Where this entertainment district currently is, where this industrial district is, and where this uh, campus currently is, okay? Three squares, three hexes away from the spoke city in the direction of the central city. And if you do this, any district that you place here will be within six tiles of uh, four of the cities, okay? It's also why I have the industrial district for each city, uh, three tiles um, on the th uh, away from it, uh, right towards the central city, is that once you get to a factory, the uh, the factory provides its production bonus to all cities within six tiles. So by placing them there, this industrial district can benefit all four of these cities. This one can benefit. Oh, I moved it. Can benefit all four of these cities, and so on and so forth. So. I believe that this sort of a city setup maximizes district adjacency. I don't think that any other city layout other than this central city surrounded by six hubs, four tiles apart, will allow you to have as much adjacency. Because by putting them four tiles apart, um, two of their uh, tile, uh, tile um, radiuses, rings, can overlap uh, at the closest section. Um, so by clustering these all together, we can maximize district adjacency. Um, now this brings us to a couple of questions. How are we going to lay these out? As well as the fact that I know this is an ideal situation. You're never going to find a location in game that is large enough that doesn't have some sort of an obstruction like uh, a lake or, an, or a, an oasis, which I don't think you can build over, uh, or mountains. I really don't think you're going to find it unless you tweak all the settings to have just a perfectly flat world um, with no uh, obstructing features. But I have managed to find, uh, and it was the first try, I started up a game as Germany because I think Germany is the best sieve for this strategy. Uh, and the reason for that is because Germany is able to build one more district uh, higher, mo one more district than the population would normally allow. So because you need all these districts uh, and you want as many districts as possible, Germany allows you to get that. And because we're maximizing adjacency and we're building our districts right next to each other, you can, uh, by placing your commercial hubs next to your industrial zones, you can maximize the use of the Germans' Hansa replacement for the industrial district that has additional adjacency with um, with uh, commercial hubs. Um, as you can see, uh, it, it's a perfectly regular uh, construction, except for we need to place the districts for the central city. And really, it doesn't matter where you put them. But if you look down here, I, I've, I've, I, I'm able to place three industrial districts uh, next to one commercial hub. And then one of them is actually next to two commercial hubs. So it, it will gain a very large production bonus. And remember, all these production bonuses that these uh, are, 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 they're not shared. But by maximizing these adjacencies, uh, we can make use of the policies that in, that grant you a 100% increase to your um, district adjacency bonuses. Uh, so we can slap all of them, or as many of them as we can possibly fit into our government in there. So by choosing the one, the government that has the highest number of economic slots at all levels, by building some wonders that give you, a, or, or expending some great people that give you an additional wild card policy slot, we can just become a massive powerhouse of adjacency bonuses. Now I'm not sure if this is ideal, but it seems like a very fun way to maximize district adjacency. So with all that said, I'm now going to, we're now going to go back into um, Civilization 6 and I'm going to show, show you how far I've come currently on my German mega city. So welcome back to Civilization 6 and welcome to the beginnings of my uh, German mega city, my, my mega civ, the, the hub city, whatever we want to call it. Uh, I like to call it mega city because it sounds like Judge Dredd. Um, so as you can see, I found what I believe to be probably one of the best situations 
uh, that you could start in in order to build a hub city like this. Um, now, my settler actually spawned uh, over here, but uh, over here next to this mountain. But uh, I, I, I scouted to the right, and then I moved him to the right, and I founded my uh, starting city here, which because I needed it to be uh, five tiles away from this coast so that I could found another city over there. Just so happened that Geneva spawned five tiles away, was five tiles away from this tile. So after founding this city, I went and conquered Geneva uh, to get my second city. And then we founded, um, I believe we founded Frankfurt uh, III and uh, Ulm IV. Now, uh, we already went over here and we raised Amsterdam, which was right on this tile. So that I can build uh, my two, three, four, fifth city right there, and then the sixth one will have to go on top of this stone. Uh, it, it's a sacrifice that we can make, and then the seventh city will go over here uh, next to Jerusalem, which is fine because I'm going to be friends with Jerusalem, and uh, it, you know it, it'd be nice. Once they're under my sway, uh, it'll be like a second holy city because of their suzerain bonus. Um, I've done some scouting around, and uh, we have China over here, and China has spread the Great Wall all the way around the city, and uh, he doesn't like me. As you can see, there's uh, Chinese uh, warriors here. He was upset that, uh, what did I do to upset him? Um, oh, I built the uh, hanging gardens. He didn't like that that I built the hanging gardens and he's been posturing units around me but as you can see here uh, if we go into the uh, strategy view you can see uh, what I've got going on here and I've actually never used the strategy view this looks really cool so here we have Aachen in the middle and this is our central city I've already marked out where the entertainment district and the Colosseum are going to go I gotta make sure you get the Colosseum and then I I've had to work around these mountains because there's quite a few mountains I've had to work around the mountains in figuring out where to place things. So, uh, it, according to my diagram, the, the, the industrial district of Frankfurt, uh, one, two, three, should have been right here where this campus is. However, I wanted to get the mountain adjacency bonus uh, for the campus uh, from Aachen. So instead, we're placing the uh, industrial district for Frankfurt right here, which is fine because it's still within range of providing its bo benefit to uh, these four cities. Um, once we get, no wait, it's these four cities. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, uh, all them. One, two, three, four, and then and then five. Wait, what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Anyway, the point is that you can see how I'm laying these things out. Uh, the mega city idea, of course, you need to um, fit it within the confines of the map that you find yourself in. This area is mostly empty space and with the mega city design all that really matters is the tiles that are inside the hub. Uh, it doesn't really matter what's on the outside of the hub so that's all a bonus. It's all gravy. The fact that there's this stone here by Frankfurt uh, and rice and, and gems and copper is all really just a bonus. And you can obviously keep building out from this. You can place additional cities four tiles away from these outer cities. And, uh, well, since all of their districts are over in here, it really doesn't matter. Once you have this central hub of your empire, any additional cities can be placed wherever the heck you want. Uh, you don't really have to care about it because you can't you give district adjacency to these uh, any more of these. Um, I built the hanging gardens because I'm going to need the population to grow quickly uh, so that we can um, build more districts. You can see I've got map pins laid down. Map pins are so important for this so you can plan ahead of where you're going to put everything. Um, there's a lot of hills over here and uh, stone so I've placed industrial districts uh, all right here. It, it still works out um, I believe this industrial district belongs to Geneva, this industrial district will belong to Aachen, this industrial district belongs to whatever city ends up going over here, this is the industrial district for this city, it's also next to some hills if I decide to make those into mines, but we're probably not going to make those into mines because uh, we need more districts placed around here, but since it's a stone here, we are going to be uh, mining that. 
and uh, getting all these adjacency bonuses. And, and here we have our, um, we're working on a commercial hub uh, to, b to benefit the Hansa here. We've got a commercial hub here, which is next to two of our uh, industrial districts here, providing uh, additional uh, production to these two Hansas, because uh, Hansas are amazing. So six production from this Hansa, and then five production from that Hansa, because this one's uh, also next to a gypsum, and this one is not. Well, we haven't built a mine there yet, but we, we're not, probably not going to because we have to put districts everywhere. So this is it. This is the uh, German megacity idea. I still, th I do think Germany is the best. I wouldn't use a civilization that uh, whose replacement dis who has a replacement district that has to be placed on a specific tile because that significantly limit it, uh, limits your ability to get adjacency bonuses, and which is what we're going for. So I wouldn't do this with Greece. Um, because you have to put their the uh, their theater district, the Acropolis, on a hill, um, so I wouldn't do it with them. But uh, any 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 sieve that has a bonus for districts, I think, who is it that can use builders to rush the districts? I don't remember. Uh, that would be a good a good one to get them up quickly. But Germany, I think, is the best. Um, it also helped that I could quickly take out Geneva in order to bring it into my uh, my empire. So that's how far I've gotten on the German megacity. I'm going to keep playing on this uh, save until we get the whole city built. And uh, and I'll clue you in when we get there. Uh, if you want to see me uh, work on this, uh, I'll probably stream this save at some point here. So uh, if you want to see some stream Civilization VI, uh, let me know in the comments. And, uh, you know, like the video. Anyway, I um, hope you've enjoyed this little look at my, my idea and uh, doing a little bit of theory crafting in Civ 6 uh, for how to infinitely sprawl your cities into a, a formation that uh, I think really really benefits districts. So anyway, uh, that's it. That's all I've got. Stay tuned for, uh, for future episodes. Uh, don't forget to uh, join our Discord. It's a great, it'll be great once we get some more people. Right now it seems like everyone just says hi to each other every day, but w hopefully we can get some uh, real conversation going. And uh, follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe for more. I'm SentinelH and I'm signing out.